Okay, so we're recording the progress on the distributive 3D printer enterprise. We have a call with Torbjorn and Jonathan has joined us here, our community manager. We're talking about Prusa i3 as the machine will go for with the first workshop as we develop OSC's version of a scalable, fully scalable, better quality actually for the purposes that we need and large enough for doing things like printing four foot wide polycarbonate glazing or car, car body panels and things like that or worm composters and and black soldier fly chambers <laughs> things like that but basically a larger scalable highly flexible version I don't know if you might have seen Torbjorn the roadmap on a 3d printer but also the scalability or modularity would mean that we can put all kinds of heads onto that so just for your reference, the roadmap page on the wiki, if you go to the 3D printer roadmap, under the full modularity and product ecology achieved part, there's a notion of all the different kinds of heads that we can put on it, up to things like laser heads or paste extruders for ceramics, things like that. Okay, so now we're evaluating the Prusa i3, the page on the wiki, called Prusa i3 development and that means adapting existing Prusa which right now we got a kit from Folger Tech you can see see that here on the wiki page we're evaluating that to see how well it works for a workshop and what improvements we want to do to make it better and include at the same time as many of the components that we will use in our final OSC spec machine in this current build one thing we're looking at right now is automatic bed leveling as a really important feature to make it super user friendly for beginners who don't have to mess with even leveling the table before they're able to uh, to print. So we're looking at right now Jonathan and Torbjorn after our evaluation build which will happen next week, mon uh, Tuesday or so next week. We're going to build that at Factory Farm, myself and Alec. We're going to report the learnings, and take pictures, take documentation, record what we can as far as how suitable that is, that current Prusa i3 from Folger Tech is for the, the, for the workshop. Because some of the critical parts will be how good are the, uh, how good is the part sourceability, is the thing actually working, are all the parts reliably uh, produced. So, so really working out the details of can this be taken to an enterprise and um, that's where we are right now discussing this now also we have uh, Joshua who's involved uh, who's gonna be involved in organizing this a little bit and maybe we can direct him as well to to if the printer works well to also get involved in sourcing the same kit to, to experiment and help us develop that for the workshop. The workshop right now is planned for March 19. That's our current deployment date. That's all I have to say. So where are we, um, where else are we right now? So Torbjorn, or Jonathan? Mm -hmm. Regarding the, the 3D printer bed leveling, I actually did a bit of research the other day. Um, but I think I forgot to post it. Let's see. It's, um, uh, it's an article there that steps through the entire state of the art. Uh, very helpful. Excellent. So uh, I landed on um, a force sensitive uh, resistor solution. Uh -huh. And I would prefer to have it near the, the tool head and not in the bed. Because if you have it in the bed, then you lose scalability because you need to have a wire going in, into the bed. And if the bed moves, then you need a very long wire and you're limited. But if you have the sensor in the print head, then you, you, you can scale up. Mm-hmm. And you can also probe anywhere on the bed if you have the if you have the, the sensor in the head. So you can probe yeah. more than three points, actually. And how does it work? Um, you plug in the first part of the resistor.
uh, into the Arduino and you have some code that with a threshold value viewing when you have pressed when when there's pressure on the printhead and then you have some simple routine walking around the bed and and, um, and counting uh, Z steps the pressure from the stepper motor so the resistance of additional current to the stepper motor or how no you you, you force the, the hot end into the print surface and then you have mounted the force sensitive resistor in such a way that it feels the pressure uh, and where is that resistor lo located you need to locate it somewhere near the print head in a smart way so that it gets squeezed so it actually gets squeezed and it gives you a different threshold uh, current through it or resistance through it yeah changes resistance when you squeeze it. Mm -hmm. So that's like a piezoelectric? Mm, I don't know if it's piezo, but I would guess something like that. Hmm. Okay. So a pressure resistor. Hmm? A pressure resistor? Yeah. Uh, the article that, which article I see, the 3D printer improvements page, which one which of those links? I can post the link in the in the chat. It said 3D Make the first 3D Make dot com link. That's good. Okay. It's a French hacker guy who's really talented. Wrote this. Okay. Yeah, force sensitive resistor. Kind of expensive. Are they really? Yeah, five, six dollars each. Wow. That's also a reason to have it mounted on, on the print head somehow. Mm hmm. So in a div just for collaborative literacy here, so I'm putting the link to the print ba printer bed leveling industry standards in the D3D industry standards page in the development spreadsheet where the development spreadsheet is on the uh, D3D development page. So good. Um, The the article that actually discusses this is that the only can you point me to the that's the product. Um, what about the actual article that discusses this? The what you mean the the blog post I was talking about that steps through the state of the art. Um. I see the 3D print, printer bed leveling page. What about some discussion of the pressure sensing resistor? Mm, it's in the. Uh, you mean something that, that I wrote? No, where'd you find out about this? I found it in the, the link that I posted on the chat right now. The 3 dmakecom make. 2015. Okay. Well, that leveling tram sensor. Okay. It's kind of a long article. Let's see, it has a link to the to the spark fun part. Yeah, uh, let's see, so 
four sensing resistor. Hmm. Okay. And and it's sensitive to within plus minus what distance? Mm, it depends on how we mount it. And supplied force anywhere between 100 grams and 10 kilograms of applied force okay so that means we get a stiff um, we have a stiff bed that it it's not really spring loaded because the springs would get rid of that accuracy maybe or uh, so a stiff bed and then you adjust the the code in the code you basically subtract the plane of the the bed based on a yeah. say a couple of four probe points yeah or the, the firmware usually uh, apply a rotation matrix on every every single G code line uh-huh okay uh, have you run into the what are your thoughts on the ones that that are simply by touch, by electrical con closing an electrical circuit. What are your thoughts on that one? They're very elegant. And it's um, potentially very cheap, but you need to have uh, wires uh, in the bed. Yeah. Which works well for the stationary bed version, right? But yeah. not for a moving bed version. It, it works well in the in the the range that the bed can move, but it's a scalability issue. Yeah. Okay. Um, have you seen documentation of these? I mean, when you say potentially easy, have you gotten a feel for what what the state of art is and that how easy it is to replicate that? I mean, that sounds like. Yeah, it's really have to evaluate these options in detail. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I'm quite sure I can implement it, but uh, um, estimating time is is kind of hard. Right. Uh, maybe the way to refactor the this applies to D3D, right? This is uh, whatever we decide here will probably be transferable, or we consider D3D. Um, yeah. in that process so maybe the next step on that would be to assess so take all the choices so far maybe do a matrix of okay here's the advantages advantages disadvantages cost and effort estimations for each something like that for each uh, bed drumming solution yeah 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 it's kind of already done in the in the article I linked you to uh, which which of the articles? Uh, 3dmake.com 2015 12. Okay. It's stepping through in in like natural language, not the matrix format. I put it on slide three. Uh, excuse me, that's slide yeah three. Slide three. Oh wow, nice. Look at that. We've got some collaboration happening. <laughs> Jonathan's a veteran. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the long longish article discusses that. Um Yeah. As the like tech tree, it steps through the tech tree of choices, discussing advantages and disadvantages. The, yeah, and the guy also implemented a, 
a bad tramming solution himself. What's tramming? Tramming, uh, it's bad leveling. Bad leveling and bad tramming are kind of the same. Seen people uh, build uh, force sensitive resistors themselves with the um, conductive foam. Mm -hmm. So that's possible. What do you guys say about the um, LCD screen on the printer? Well, the present kit, I believe, comes with it. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, we'll get the data when we when we do the build, right? Yeah, we will. And we can talk about options what, as far as the base kit like for the workshop includes that it doesn't include it and whatever it includes we can make those decisions based on the costs and uh, performance of those things okay so I, scanning through that article it doesn't say much about um, well I mean the practice I kind of looking at it I'm not getting a good feeling for the the amount of cost time or ease for each option it's kind of saying okay these are the options um, somewhat talks about it, but not, I think the next step would be refactoring that for, um, uh, our considerations, or what do you, what do you think, what do you think we should do next? Me? Yeah. I think we should just try to implement the prototype and see if it which one that you're you're suggesting the the resistor yeah they have a uh, auto living inductive proximity sensor on ebay for 448 uh, slide mm -hmm. number four just put a uh, link to that i don't know if you've referred to that or not but yeah lots of printers uh those. I'm sure you've probably seen that one, but yeah. Let's see. Why? It's a non non invasive measurement technique, so it's no touch. I would say there's probably accuracy issues involved with that. That doesn't sound. Uh, are, are, I mean, what are the pros and cons? Is accu Do you think accuracy is really good on those? Probably not. I know it's good enough, but you must have metal below your print head. Mm -hmm. So, an aluminum bed, for example, would aluminum work? Yeah. Aluminum is what people use. But uh, yeah, it would uh, it would create a um, uh, dependency, extra dependency. So bed level is dependent on bed material. I don't know if you want to add uh, that dependency. Usually, you just have glass print bed. Especially if you don't have a heated print bed. 
Oh, sorry, what was the comment on a heated print bed? A heated print bed uh, usually has a heat spreader, uh, a flat sheet of, of aluminum. Mm -hmm. But printers without heat bed, they don't usually have aluminum print beds. Right. Yeah. Uh, if the surface is glass, this doesn't work. It has to be directly on the... If there's aluminum below that, can that still... I'm not sure. It? Yeah. Yeah, I think we... Yeah, prototype as well as... I mean, under test-driven development, uh, go to the hairball of various potential steps to evaluate. And I would say... Uh, your you would um, you would prefer prototyping the at this point the touch sensitive pressure sensitive resistor. Yeah, I would. Just because if it works, then it's. The best solution. Because what? It, it works to have just one sensor and uh, basing it uh, on actual touch and force would be best. Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah. And if it doesn't work, then we will see when we pro prototype it. Uh, Touch and force also makes the bed the leveling mechanism independent of print head length. If we want to change print heads or mount another tool. Sure. Right. You want to? I mean, we should. Maybe we should. Uh, I think it would be useful to 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 determine some criteria for our selection. Yeah, we should maybe write down all these arguments somewhere yeah yeah that's what I refer to like a matrix of comparisons uh, pros cons let's see so maybe let's start that on slide number six new slide okay you got infrared mechanical capacitive um, inductive and ultrasonic you got quite a few This way we can um, get feedback on it as well, uh, whether our assessment is good, um, comparisons yeah. of... See what's a good way to do that here. Yeah. We want to categorize where based on where the sensors are placed and what kind of sensor it is.
okay, there's two types of open short circuit. There's uh, there's another one where it's just a press on the bed and a connection is made or broken not between the print head and the metal but because you're making and breaking some connection under the bed so yeah. uh, Um, can we say like under bed, under sprint, sprung bed, it's got a spring loaded bed. but uses I would call maybe potential difference between print surface and print head. Potential difference isn't mm, okay. using a piezo disc. So what you say? Some guy uh, is using it from Nor from uh, Norway is using a piezo disc. How come? All, all firmware is all from all types of sensors. Just need to specify what's a high and what's a low. Uh, no, but I mean, I meant just for the technique, not on the software, but overall. I mean, um, just support available for implementation. Like, um, if we find who's done it, are they? Do they talk to you? build does who built it talk to you <laughs> is a uh, builder open <laughs> Tilt print head, that's the first one. So, so yeah. the breakage of the contact is upon tilting the head. Yeah. Okay. Um. So I'm gonna put a slide yeah. before that, and I'm gonna go requirements, um, mechanism requirements. For example, I would put any mechanism that requires movement. 
of parts should be avoided. Uh. Like, for which reason? There's a simple contact. Like, you've got this contact of on the disc that you talked about, on the resistor, that would classify as good. Um... So we're gonna say optimal so solution should be um, because any additional movement yeah, so it would require no additional movement because any additional movement means that's a feature that has to be built into the hardware. No additional movement of parts. That's an uh. other than what the printer already goes through in normal operation. I mean, obviously low cost, easy to build, has good support, um, reliable to, what are the specifications there to, to one fifth the height layer thickness? Uh, to yeah, you have a precision parameter. And you have also repeatability. Some solutions will be very precise for 10, 10 prints, then you have to adjust them. And some of them are kind of precise forever. <laughs> yeah, so I would say reliability is this, would this be good? Like for example, one fifth of layer thickness plus minus 50% of that layer thickness. Is that, do they have figures of merit that anyone uses or? Uh, I would say one fifth the layer, that would be kind of like what you definitely would need. Maybe it's even one tenth the layer thickness. Uh, well, we, we can ask, we can ask Lozbot what their algorithm is. Um, what is their design for the accuracy imposed upon their bed leveling mechanism yeah that would be our test driven design here i'm gonna uh i'll ask i'll email jeff right now that would be a good thing yeah i mean they're doing it there is absolutely reliable i've never had any trouble with bed leveling on this machine i turn it on and the thing prints so yeah we should learn from these guys um as long as you never have plastic uh, between between the printhead and the bed, then uh, well, this like that is very very precise. Right, and that plastic they do it by scrubbing the head on something, but I think that also could be done by uh, the design of the nozzle or. Um, something where it's it would actually require modification of the nozzle head but it's not the nozzle but something equivalent to the nozzle hitting the like a little little pr a probe that's just attached to the head there or it's such that when you touch down because the plastic is molten it should not interfere with the conduct the making of the contact yeah that's the the good thing about using force sensitive resistors because then you will just pressure through all the molten plastic. Yeah. If you're relying on electrical contact to something that's not uh, the nozzle, then you need to have an arm sticking out that's yeah. uh, above the nozzle height, and then you risk having the nozzle running into that thing in the bed that's sticking out. Yeah. Yeah, you need, you need some structure that that 
is higher than the rest of the brake bed if you're not going to use the, no the nozzle as your um, as your sensor, like low spot does. Yeah. So it yeah creates its own problems. Right. Um. I think one of the main figures of merit here is uh, we should add a column to this accuracy and repeatability. So we should have a number. I think that's the most important figure we need in this table. Uh, so well, if we're going to do it properly, that's we would need that. Yeah. Uh, let's see, how do you add a column? We need Insert. A, a larger matrix because there's so many solutions. Yeah, let's. Can we um? Can we just reduce the text size on that to about ten, and then add a couple of columns? Yeah. How do we add another column there? Um, oh, simple uh, right click, insert column right. Okay. Um, I think the proof, could... proven comes out of examples. Yeah, exactly. And whoever's putting, uh, whoever put early smart friends, can you put a link to that? So link. Mm. Yeah. So we that figure should be so accuracy and and repeatability should be. microns plus minus percent of that percent of that base yeah so we don't really want to say layer thickness yeah for us it could be like one fifth the layer thickness whatever our layer thickness is but that has a value to it in millimeters. Uh, you want it? Don't you want it the same unit as uh, layer height? Yeah, layer height is also in millimeters. It is. I thought it was typically yeah. microns. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Microns is fine. So a thousand microns is a millimeter. Yeah. So a hundred microns is a tenth of a millimeter. That's kind of like the. I've seen uh, the best printers get like, I think some of them go to like twenty microns, which I don't know if how meaningful that is. Because. Uh, uh, they say twenty microns uh, uh, precision on all the axes. Yeah, it could be that. Um, because of course the the thread itself is going to be on hundreds of microns. Yeah, they just throw out a number because it doesn't make any sense yep. to say 20 microns here and there. If you tighten the belt, then you have 50 microns and then you lose a micron every day. <laughs> it's, yeah. Yeah, it's just complicated. 
Mm. That's kind of what why I want the, the the lead screw so much because it's much simpler to sure. specify position. When people talk about reprogramming, is do they talk about reprogramming the software or firmware here? Uh, just uh, one piece of software and that's the firmware. Sorry, one piece of software and what? It, wait, it, it just, um, it's just... Yeah, it's just... It, it's, the, it's the firmware, the program that's on the printer itself. Okay. Hmm. So is the requirement or is this automatically taken care of that you don't need to uh, reprogram the uh, uh, I'm, I'm not familiar with the tool chains enough I mean there's the program that's on the uh, the firmware on the, on the printer itself that's what you need to change but you don't but also things like configuration files is, th is that you're you're considering that as part of the firmware there is a configuration file for the firmware and then there's different configuration files for slicing. So you would need to change the firmware configuration but you can keep all your g-code and stuff. So I think the requirement specified is does not require modification of slicing. Because, I mean, I'm sure there could be some other modifications that would require that. Yeah, yeah, there, it could. Uh, so we're not going to change the slicing unless we need to, unless we see a reason for that, which we don't. Uh, what else? Let's see. Um, I think I need to get going like 2 p.m. here, so maybe we could start wrapping up. But but so we've got the specific the requirements for bed leveling. Maybe we can finish off on that, and the next step would be to look at uh, evaluating the implementation of that, especially after we see the build itself. I mean, it might turn out that we're struggling too much with the kit itself, and we won't have enough time to implement the bed leveling. I mean, that's a it's a hope we have right now that we would would definitely if we don't have too many troubles with the build itself, right? Yeah. Mm hmm Yeah. Mm, I kind of have really uh, informed expectations about what you what you will meet when you build the kit. <laughs> uh, what What are your thoughts? You think it's gonna be hard? I think you will spend a lot of time you know, trimming the the trim pots for the stepper drivers. And also, you will spend a lot of time uh, getting the wires right. Just plugging in the wires takes almost half the time, usually. Right, but is that because of lack of documentation or because of 
because of the number of steps required? Uh, because it's uh, usually saved to, to, to the last step when there's wires all over the place. So you get confused and, uh, yeah. Do you have suggestions for keeping better track? Yeah, we should really do cable management uh, continuously during the build. Okay, so and maybe before... We should find electronics that don't require users to, to touch the trim pot and risk uh, ruining the motors and step drivers. You want the software to handle to handle that. Uh, trim pots on the ramps? Is that Yeah. So in other words we don't you're suggesting we we don't want to use ramps. Yeah. Mm hmm We want to use another electronics kit. Yeah. So offhand yeah. we're probably expecting that because this comes with ramps, right? That's that's what we're Yeah. Um let's see. Let's see what it says there under kit page. So we're pretty much saying, unless we figure out a, yeah, okay, uh, that sounds, I think what you're saying right there is, um, we, want, we need to simplify all those steps. Um, but I'm really interested in how much fiddling it takes to get the LCD screen running because I haven't done that myself. So I'll have to trust your opinion on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, let's see. Yeah. Let's see, Folger Tech. I didn't even document the link on the mm. Prusa page. Okay. So here, here's the link. Folger Tech Kit. I'm gonna put that as a link right on Folger Tech. Okay, so if you refresh the um, Prusa i3 development page, folder folder tech kit is linked right to the title there. Um, uh, so it says it's got the. A4988 stepper drivers. How do we know that? Okay, ramps 1.4. There it is. Mm, that's uh, the most usual and the, the weakest and the cheapest electronics available. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so we're probably expecting to excise those. Uh, do you see any promise in, in that, or you don't see any promise around the trim pots? Uh, around that, how much time does it take currently to do that? To do the trim pots? Yeah, what's the process there? Uh, for me personally, the, the first time I did it, it took like two hours. Whoa. And, but to do it now, it takes maybe half an hour if I have to look up documentation, which I do uh -huh. every second time. Mm -hmm. And without documentation it takes 15 minutes. 1-5, 15 minutes? Yeah. What is the process required? So you, you adjust it and then what do you do? You you run the motor? If you have, if you have an assembly printer, you, you first need to unplug your motor and to unplug your motor, you need to power down your printer. So power down, unplug the motor, and then you you power it up again, mm -hmm. and you take multimeter and measure a voltage. And then you go calculate which voltage you want by looking at the motor spec, 
and at the the stepper driver spec, matching those, finding the right voltage. Then you start screwing on the tensiometer. Then you measure the voltage between the. Oh wow! Again, to see, yeah, what what voltage you have now, and then you do it again and again until you're at the right voltage. Okay, forget about it. That's that's absolutely unacceptable for this kind of workshop. So uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll have to move beyond that. What's the uh, what are some examples? What's the board that doesn't do that? Doesn't require uh, that? Rambo. Rambo doesn't do that. How much is that over the existing system? How much price would that add? Oh, totally depends. I bought one from Ultimachine recently, and that was really expensive. Rambo, not this Rambo board. Uh, let's see. Whoa, they're like a hundred twenty-eight. There's eighty bucks. They're eighty bucks, seventy-five. One point two G. Yeah, what's what's uh, what's version one point two G? Okay, uh, Ultimate Machine sells one point three. They are the ones who created the Rambo, so they're they're uh, the highest quality source. But they're also expensive. Mhm. Mm yeah. Um, okay. Um, you know the um, troublemaker. Yep. They swapped out the uh, ram, uh, ramps and used Rambo instead. Yep. Because of this. Yep. But there are other electronics kits with uh, digital print pots. Uh, and the detection happens, you actually detect the voltage requirement or you still have to set it manually? Uh, you just specify the, the voltage you want uh, in the firmware, in the code. Which can be automatic based on a reliable source of the steppers. Mm, yeah, when you know which steppers you use. Sure. You, you can find the right voltage and just uh, punch it into the firmware and upload the firmware. But hold on, if you have to say a NEMA 17 stepper, they operate at different voltages? They're set for... Yeah. What's the, what's the range? I mean from 12 to 24 or like what? I mean, well you can... You can the important uh, is really to not, uh, not send too much current through the stepper motor. But aren't those so, like say NEMA seventeen? Aren't those all identical, or they're, that's just the housing size? It can be different inside. It's the housing uh, size, yeah, or mm -hmm. the housing area. Okay. So NEMA seventeen is just an uh, interface for four screws. Okay. All right. Okay. Good to know. So I yeah. won't I won't get troubled by that when I get to that. I didn't know that. Okay. Um, Okay, so we're going to have to pretty much, before the build, uh, we want to think about how we manage the... Well, we should probably build, just build it and go through that, unless we refuse to. Um, let's see, is it worthwhile to go through that if we know we're not going to use that? I mean, we um, just... Yeah, it is. I think it is. It's worthwhile? Yeah, you you learn a lot. Okay. I think we might have to feel the pain. <laughs> yeah. Not okay. That bad. You can always ask me. Okay. All right, so we'll probably plan on